Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Crypto Marketing Insights. Um, today, I'm going to address real quick some exciting news in the world of Bitcoin and uh, marketing Bitcoin and Bitcoin businesses um, that have to do with retail outlets, actually, and all kinds of consumer options. And yes, as the uh, clickbaity title might suggest, uh, uh, it's not just PayPal and Venmo, right? Uh, and also, while it is about 20,000 retail outlets you may have heard of recently, it's not maybe the most recent one you've heard of. Uh, but we will get into those as well. So if you think that's exciting, woohoo! So let's get right into it. It turns out that about a month ago, there was a news release that a company called Megasoft um, was announcing that 20,000 retail outlets would accept Bitcoin in Venezuela. Now, as you know, um, Bitcoin in Venezuela has a quite an interesting history, and it is, uh, in many ways, a great place to mine if you have, you know, the resources because the electricity is relatively cheap, and you can mine a lot of coin there. And at the same time, the government has had quite a, you know, history of trying to regulate or uh, control the use of crypto. They even created their own coin at some point, the Petro, which failed miserably because it was basically a bad, you know, hard fork of Dash with some edits made to it. But uh, basically, uh, Megasoft and their merchant service platform, or the merchant server platform, uh, lets uh, retail outlets uh, in Venezuela accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, Litecoin, uh, Binance Coin, um, Tether, Dai, uh, and also XPT, which is the native uh, token of the platform called Crypto Buyer. So Crypto Buyer is a, the system that they're using, at the crypto payments processor that they're using at Megasoft to enable these payments. Um, why is it interesting from a marketing perspective? Well, as we all know, Venezuela has uh, a significant economic dire straits, let's call it. And for them, Bitcoin, even if it's falling in value against the dollar, is not falling so much in value against the Bolivar, which is their local currency, which is horribly, you know, hyperinflated over the years. And it makes it a lot easier if you have Bitcoin to able to have some kind of stability with your economy or with your personal finances if you're in Venezuela. But the problem, of course, is a, most Venezuelans don't have Bitcoin, right? And B, most shops to date don't record with Bitcoin, uh, don't uh, make transactions with Bitcoin. The problem is that uh, the Bolivar's hyperinflation is a not good situation for anyone holding Bolivars, obviously. And therefore, Bitcoin can act as kind of a hedge, or really a hedge, for Venezuelans who are fortunate enough to have it. Um, Aside from that, the practical day-to-day -day applications are also much better with Bitcoin. And here's where the marketing juice really comes in, right? Because forget the store of value of Bitcoin for a second. While that is important to what I'm about to say, it's not the thing. The thing is now by having 20,000 more outlets, you know, and really had some outlets accepted, but now you have more outlets and more common outlets in Venezuela accepting Bitcoin, you know, in a country where it's actually a useful thing, more so than in the U.S., where it's arguably not the better store of value yet, although it is. Um, in Venezuela, if you go to a pharmacy and you have hyperinflation, 
the price of your medicine might be, you know, 10 bolivars today or 50 tomorrow or whatever the crazy inflation of the day situation is. Or maybe it goes from 100 back down to 20 for a day, you know, like it's just insane volatility, bad inflation, bad economics. So by having Bitcoin as a relatively stable currency compared to the bolivar, you can at least exchange in Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or whatever, or, your, or some stable coin or whatever you want. And then that way, it's more stable, right? You're not going to be paying 100 Satoshis today and then 10,000 Satoshis tomorrow for the same thing, right? I mean, unless the price of Bitcoin falls to the earth and, you know, crashes and whatever. But so far, that hasn't happened, right? Every time it has a big dip, it you know, somehow comes back up again. So maybe it'll do that again, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you that. You know, I'm not going to predict the future on that. I don't care about that. I'm, the application here is what matters is that for now, there's a number of cryptos that are essentially more stable than an actual fiat, right? And we know that there's more than one that that's the case. And therefore, it's a better choice for consumers. And therefore, in a way, it's also better for the economy itself, right? While you might say, well, this is going to be bad for the Bolivar because nobody will be using the Bolivar. Nobody's using the damn Bolivar anyway. I mean, you know, yes, of course they're using it. But, like, it's so hyperinflated to pay a million Bolivars to buy a bicycle or whatever. It, you know, it, it's a bit ridiculous. And having crypto as a form of payment instead is a lot more manageable. You know, you don't have to carry around suitcases of cash or write ridiculously, you know, huge checks um, if you even have that kind of money. And of course, you know, by having all of these retail options, the bottom line is the choices will increase. You know, it, we're not talking about all of a sudden all of Venezuela is going to use crypto. Of course not. We're far, far, far from there. But by having already, you know, they've had already some dozens of stores in the country that accept it. So it's not like it's a brand new thing that no one's ever heard about in Venezuela, right? They understand it, they get it. And more people will probably choose to use it over time. So from my point of view, in the way that Bitcoin needs to be marketed in a sense without having staff on the Bitcoin payroll or the marketing department necessarily, because there's no you know, uh, I think it's good for Bitcoin, bottom line. I think it's great for Bitcoin that they're accepting it in as many stores as possible in Venezuela, despite the fact that it's a messed up place, despite the fact that, you know, they can do a lot better uh, economically by changing some things. I don't want to get into that. There's certainly enough views on that that are far more expert on the local issues. Uh, but from a marketing of Bitcoin point of view, this is very, I don't want to say bullish, but it is very, it is very optimistic. So that's one issue. Now, PayPal and Venmo. No, not yet. The other 20,000 stores that made the news not in the last month, but in the last few days. Um, and that's Liberty X, right? And if you look at the news, Liberty X has announced that up to 20,000 retail locations in the US, uh, including 7-Eleven, CVS, and Rite Aid Pharmacy are going to be accepting Bitcoin. <laughs> Yay, ta-da, fireworks. Bitcoin logo, do something exciting with the graphics. Um, yeah. Um, so that's really, really bullish for Bitcoin because now you've got 20,000 very popular street retail locations in the US that people will have exposure to Bitcoin. That cannot be understated in its importance. Um, while it may not be hundreds of millions of people buying Bitcoin every day or trading Bitcoin every day, uh, whatever. It is a major inroad when you get into the area of daily consumer points of sale. 
yeah, maybe it's not as easy or as cheap, or well, it's easy, I'm sure it'd be easier, but maybe it's not as uh, cheap as buying your coin in some other places because they'll have some kind of premium or whatever, and maybe it's maybe it'll be a little bit of a, a different experience in how you onboard there, but it doesn't really matter. And the point is we need to make more ways for people to onboard, right? There are too many obstacles in the way between you and getting new crypto at the moment. There's still too many obstacles for most people. Yes, of course you can find easier ways to do it. And there are many, but there are still hurdles with the most popular ways that people go about it, especially in the US. By having it suddenly be accessible in retail points of sale, that opens up an enormous market that has yet to be tapped where the return on investment is mind boggling. Right? Because now you've got actual retail adoption. They're not going to be buying Bitcoin at CBS or 7-Eleven or Rite Aid you know, to trade it. No, they're going to be using whatever crypto they want to use there. Maybe they won't use Bitcoin because it's a store of value perception issue in the U.S. But whatever crypto they can use, they may. Right? If you could use, I don't know, the Ethereum or Litecoin or whatever other coin that you think is, okay, let's spend this stuff. Um, again, like in Venezuela, but in the U.S., it is a huge on-ramp of opportunity for Bitcoin and other cryptos. So, um, again, it comes from Liberty X, right? Liberty X, just so you know, in case you don't know the background, they, they are probably the biggest company in the U.S. that makes Bitcoin and crypto ATMs. So, for them to be rolling out at those kind of chains, um, it is a big deal. It may be a tiny speck on the map in terms of competition to other fiat systems, but to have you know 20,000 retail stores and now also 5,000 ATMs just in the UT in, in the US where you can buy and you know Bitcoin with cash, and you can also use your debit card, of course, to buy the, the coin. And when you look at the map of the exposure, I'll, I'll put it on the screen so you can see it, and I'll link to it as well as this article from Bitcoin.com. Um, when you look at the, the, the map of where the locations are, there is so much population density around these areas. Um, you'd be a fool to think this is bad for Bitcoin, right? I mean, it's practically in every state. I think there's maybe South Dakota. They might not have anything in South Dakota, or they might have one or two, I'm not sure, but it looks pretty empty there. Um, but basically the other states, you know, even in Alaska or Hawaii, I think, well, maybe not Alaska, but definitely in Hawaii, there's locations. So Alaska, South Dakota, I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> maybe you guys need to figure out some other way to, to get on board with those retail chains or, or other ones. But if 48 out of 50 states are offering Bitcoin, at retail spaces like CVS, Rite Aid, 7-Eleven. Um, again, think about who is holding the biggest bags of coin. Think about what their interests are price-wise for the coin. I don't care about the actual price, but think about their range of pricing control that they're thinking about so that they have enough of it so that when there's enough retail market, they can market it and make money. Think about who owns those coins? Look at the other interests they own. Look at the business deals they have in place. Look at the systems that are being put in place to facilitate more use of this stuff, right? So again, I want to keep it relatively short. I don't know if that was, but uh, that's kind of my take on the, the 20,000 and the 20,000. I do want to talk about PayPal and Venmo, but... Um, well, I'll keep it brief for now, and I will uh, maybe add more about it later. But PayPal and Venmo, when you add up their user bases, something like 365 million people. Now, there's probably some overlap between the 40 million Venmo users and the 325 million PayPal users. Probably. I'm sure there's some over. Not probably. There's definitely overlap. Right? It's probably a significant amount. So even if you discount the entire 40 million people from Venmo and just say, this is a PayPal story, the PayPal story itself, 325 million people using PayPal, 
will suddenly be exposed to Bitcoin and have their own Bitcoin wallet in their PayPal profile. You can tell me how it's bad because it's centralized and it's all these other things. Yeah, not it's hard to argue with that. But it's not bad to have Bitcoin suddenly be exposed to 4% of the world's population, right? Now, yes, many people on PayPal know what Bitcoin is. Duh, obviously. But many don't use it, right? Most don't use it, right? <laughs> Most people on PayPal do not buy Bitcoin. And the fact that PayPal accepts Bitcoin or is planning to, if they do, by the way, this is still rumor, this is still speculation, but the news came out, you'll see the story here, I'll flash it up on the screen and I'll link to it, like always. Um, if in the next three months, or even in the next year, PayPal and or Venmo accept Bitcoin, right, that gives kind of, well, I don't want to say it, but hell, I will. The kind of credibility it lends to Bitcoin at that point is very strong. You can call Bitcoin garbage, a scam, or whatever you want. But when you have a system like PayPal saying, well, actually, we're buying into it. And PayPal is front and center with hundreds of millions of people around the world. They're not officially a bank, right? They're a payment solution. They're an online payment solution. They're very much like Bitcoin without the decentralization aspect, right? So for them to acknowledge that Bitcoin is basically the future or it holds a bright spot for their future, otherwise they wouldn't even discuss this, right? Um, and it wouldn't have been leaked. It says a lot. And also, if it is completely fake, if it's totally a rumor, fake news, which has happened before, we've certainly seen our share of fake news promising things about Bitcoin that didn't happen. Nevertheless, the fact that it's been seriously taken as a rumor from PayPal and Venmo, and it has yet to be forcibly denied after 22, 48, 72 hours, that tells you something. That I'm messing around. They didn't join the Libra Association, only to leave it shortly after, for the purpose of not having an interest in crypto. They obviously are interested in crypto. And I've been saying for years, you wait till PayPal gets into this. Everybody said to me, ah, what do they want with crypto? They love fiat. And it's true, they do love fiat. They want to defend crypto, and I've said that myself. But by fiat. But they also want a piece of crypto. Why wouldn't they? Their business is making money, right? So, on that said, like I said, I'll keep it short. Um, but all in all, these three particular titles, these three particular news items, in my opinion, are very good for Bitcoin marketing and for crypto marketing in general. And with that said, um, I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful, happy day, great Friday, great weekend, whatever you're doing. And uh, until next time, folks. Take care.